In this lecture, I'll show you how to propagate uncertainty when you're adding and subtracting numbers with uncertainty. The best way I know of teaching propagating uncertainty is to just give you the rule and then give you a ton of examples that I work through. So that's what I'm going to do in this video. When you're adding or subtracting numbers with uncertainty, the uncertainty of their sum or difference equals the sum of the absolute uncertainties of each individual number. So if the sum or difference y is equal to a plus or minus b, that means that the uncertainty of y, the uncertainty of that result, is equal to the sum of the absolute uncertainties of the two numbers. And just as a heads up, if you don't know what I mean by absolute uncertainty specifically, you should go back and watch my lecture on absolute fractional and percent uncertainty that I've linked in the description. I'll go through the six addition problems and then the six subtraction problems. In problem number one on the left, I can see that the uncertainties are already written as absolute uncertainties, so all I need to do is add the two numbers together and then add the two absolute uncertainties together, and this is my result. So 5 plus or minus 2 plus 8 plus or minus 4 is equal to 13 plus or minus 6, and I'm keeping that unit the same and in the correct spot. So again, if you're adding or subtracting any two numbers with uncertainty, you just add their absolute uncertainties. So I just added 2 plus 4 to get the new absolute uncertainty of 6. In number 2, we do the same thing because those are both absolute uncertainties. So I add the two numbers and then add their uncertainties together. And this is the result that I get, 9.5 plus or minus 0 0.8 meters. In problem number three, we have an issue because those uncertainties are not absolute uncertainties, and I need them to be absolute uncertainties to follow the rule. So before I can add these, I need to convert these back to absolute uncertainties instead of percent uncertainties. So to do that, I just multiply the percentage as a decimal by the original number. That's how you get from percent uncertainty to absolute uncertainty. And when I do that, these are the absolute uncertainties that I get for each number. So those two numbers with uncertainty are the same as the original two numbers. They're just expressed with absolute uncertainty instead of percent uncertainty, but they're the same values. And now that they're expressed in absolute uncertainty, I can add them together using the rule. And when I do that, this is what I get. In number four, I can see that those uncertainties are fractional uncertainties. I can tell because the unit is to the right of the number, not to the right of the uncertainty. And again, I explained how to tell that an uncertainty is fractional in the lecture linked in the description. So I have to start by converting fractional uncertainties to absolute uncertainties. So I multiply the fraction by the original number. And when I do that, this is what I get for the absolute uncertainties. And now that this is an absolute uncertainty, I can just add the uncertainties together and solve the problem. In number five, I have a mixed problem where one of my numbers is in absolute uncertainty and another is in percent uncertainty. So I'm gonna keep the absolute uncertainty the same and convert the percent uncertainty to absolute uncertainty. And when I do that, this is what I get. And then when I add the absolute uncertainties together, this is my answer. Number six is similar. I have a number with absolute uncertainty and a number with fractional uncertainty. So I only convert the fractional uncertainty number to be absolute. And when I do that, this is what I get. And when I add the two absolute uncertainties together, this is my result. So that's how you add two numbers with uncertainty. And if you wanted to express any of those results in fractional or percent uncertainty, you can just follow the normal rules for converting from absolute to fractional to percent. Going into the subtraction examples, when you're subtracting two numbers, you still add their absolute uncertainties to each other. A common mistake students make is to subtract them, but you still add the uncertainties. So in number one, 10 plus or minus two minus five plus or minus four is gonna be equal to 10 minus five plus or minus the sum of the absolute uncertainties. So that's gonna be five plus or minus six. In number two, I follow the same rule where I subtract the numbers but add their absolute uncertainties. So the result there will be eight plus or minus three. In number three, I have the numbers expressed with percent uncertainty, so I need to convert those to absolute uncertainties by multiplying the percent as a fraction times the original number. And when I do that, these are the absolute uncertainties that I get. So subtracting one number from the other and adding their absolute uncertainties gets me this answer. In number four, I have two numbers with fractional uncertainties because of the position of the unit. So to convert from fractional to absolute, I just multiply the fraction by the original number and then I subtract the original numbers and add their absolute uncertainties, and this is the number that I get. In number five, I have one number with an absolute uncertainty and one number with a percent uncertainty, so I only convert the percent uncertainty to be absolute. This is what I get when I do that. And then I add the absolute uncertainties together, subtract the numbers, and this is my answer. And just notice that I rounded that uncertainty to the correct number of decimal points. 
Finally, number six, I have an absolute and a fractional uncertainty, so I convert the fractional to absolute. And this is what I get. I add the uncertainties together, and this is my result. So again, that's how you propagate uncertainty when you're adding or subtracting numbers. You add or subtract the numbers themselves, but you always add the absolute uncertainties together. And if your numbers aren't expressed with absolute uncertainty, you need to convert to absolute uncertainty before solving the problem.